What we changed in the boat is it's been a, several little things, no major, major changes. Uh, we updated the, the engine cowling, you know, just to, uh, to clean up the aerodynamics with that. A couple little minor, you know, uh, things like with the front wing, we changed uh, a little bit there, very little. And uh, other than that, it was just a lot of dotting the I's, crossing the T's, making sure everything is uh, going to function to the expectations of a first year team. If we fail on the first year, we're in big trouble. So we have to make sure everything works perfectly. The Fight for Lanes deal is how real racers race. Simple as that. You know, um, there's no sense setting up a parade before, you know, in advance if you're going to call it a race. You're definitely going to be more prone to uh, some traffic jams, so to speak. Uh, you know, but that's all part of any sort of motorsports. If you're afraid to, to get the thing scratched or bent, you should probably stick to golf. I think. Uh, you know, keeping in mind that this is our first year, and we, in, with this mile and two thirds being at the first race, we're going to be cautious. We have to. But as a racer, you know, we're just going to make sure that we make it to the Sunday show, you know, and not, you know, try and wear the thing out in the first day of, of our whole existence. It would be silly. As co-owner, this is year one. As owner operator, we're going to minimize our risk. It's just all got to be thought out methodically and working with Scott is, you know, we've, we've worked together very well in the past and we're going to talk about it. We're going to work, you know, him being on the radio as well, it's going to work out really well. We're just going to do the best we can and uh, don't do anything stupid. You know, we want to run towards the front. Is it realistic to go win race after race after race? No, but we're just being realistic and, you know, we may surprise ourselves in a positive way. We might really surprise ourselves in a negative way. We don't know. Um, you know, this is, everything is new to us here and, uh, you know, it's, it's just really difficult to say. I'm not going to say we're going to go kick anyone's ass. Most of the guys like Mike and Jeff and, and uh, Perkins and, and myself that are racing a lot of other stuff, you know, on the off weekends, I think that is a big advantage, you know, and then you got the old guys that, uh, you know, open up the, bar, the bottle of Geritol and they don't want to run any more than they have to. You know, yeah, there's been some obvious tension between our organization and the organization we were once with, but it doesn't matter. If we spend too much time focusing on that, that's not going to accomplish anything. That's not going to get the job done. And that's not going to represent our sponsors. That's not going to help us win races. We're going to just keep our nose to the grindstone. We don't care what anybody else is up to. And we're going to go race everybody just as hard as we can. And in the end, we're still going to be in business for next year and this next year after that and for here on out. Every race season begins with teams that are barely going to make it. I'm not saying we're exempt from that. We're two weeks away and we're still painting boats, still putting hardware in it. So, you know, it, I don't care if the race was in, first race was in September. Somehow, some way, at least half the series is struggling to make it to the first race. The sport is, uh, you know, it's been on life support several different times since I've been involved in the sport. I've been involved in, in unlimited racing since, you know, as a crew guy since 95. And it was good and it was on its downhill and then it was real bad and then it started getting better and then, it, you know, it's been up and down. But well, now we're starting to race internationally and uh, getting some more recognition through uh, uh, the marketing companies involved with the series and, uh, you know, just getting more corporate interest in the sport, I think it's definitely on the positive. Peter Zemay has been pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, they've been so helpful in, in uh, just everything they've done for our organization. And, you know, if you look at the broad spectrum of, of boat racing in general, you know, they've got their name in most every series you can think of that floats. And, uh, you know, they're doing their best to market their brand. And five years ago, three years ago, 
I didn't know what Peter Zemay was, and nor did anybody that I'd raced with. Now I'm pretty sure most everybody does. So, um, you know, they're being a great help to our organization, and now it's our turn to repay and, and do a great job for them.